What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video. Today I'm going to be looking at a rumor that was started by Chris Johnston on the Steve Dangle podcast and he was alluding to the fact that the Toronto Maple Leafs might have been in the market for a bigger name player at the deadline uh, on top of what they already did and that going into this offseason that they are probably going to be getting uh, a pretty good name to be able to add to this roster. Now mind you, um, we will get into who they might lose and how they might open up some cap space because people seem to think it's impossible, but no, it is very possible for them to open up cap space. We might lose a player or two that you might not want to lose, but at the same time, if you're bringing in a bigger name, a guy that can score, uh, and then bringing in better players for your bottom six, listen, there's a very good possibility that this could work out for the Leafs. Although, guys, I'm with you. You, the person watching this going, oh, here we go again. Trust me, I am 100% with you, but we have to look into it. That's what I do on this channel, and I want to continue to do that. So if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Like this video. Do whatever you got to do, but let's waste no more time. So uh, Chris Johnston was on the Steve Dangle podcast and mentioned that there's going to be like one player, and this is his quote, there's going to be like one player on this roster on opening night that is going to get everyone excited. I'm talking a big name, a big promise player, and no one's going to see it coming. I think they're going to make a big move. He says the player in mind didn't play in the playoffs this year, plays for an American team, and has multiple years left on the deal. Now, that's obviously going to be a few seasons. So, this person on Twitter named the Noah Banks. So make sure to go and um, at least give this this tweet some love. Um, the Twitter handle is at Noah underscore Banks with a X at the end there. Put up a list of categories and names of players that he could think um, could be a name that the Leafs could be looking at. Now, the likely names are the ones that I wanted to at least take a look at. So Troy Terry from Anaheim, which personally I don't think is going to be it. Christian Dvorak, which we're going to look at. Um, Oliver Bjorkstrand from Columbus. Very possible, but this isn't the name I'm going to look at. Rope, um, no, he's definitely not available. Ropines, hopefully um, he's a guy that the Leafs would at least check in on, but yeah, Dallas is probably not in that situation. Konechny, which we will get to, and Kevin Blanc uh, from the San Jose Sharks, which to me, I don't think that that trade would make a lot of sense or that he uh, would be available um, to come over to Toronto. Now, here's the thing. Take this with a grain of salt. This isn't guaranteed names. These aren't names that were directly um, being talked about. But you could go and look at this thread of tweets and pick out names that you believe could be available. I mean, there's going to be delusional people that think, oh, it's it's definitely Jack Eichel. The Leafs are going to trade Marner, this, that, and the other. Who knows? Maybe that's a possibility. I don't think it is. Maybe Patrick Laine. Don't think so. I think Columbus is going to let him run free this year. Tortorella was let go. They mutually agreed, even though it was probably like, yeah, no, like this just isn't going to work. You need to you need to get out of here. We need our stars to play better. Um, but we'll have to see. But this is the thing. We're, we're just, first of all, we're going to take a look at a guy like Travis Konechny. Now, I'm sure Flyers fans are watching this and going, no, he's definitely not available. But Konechny was scratched a few times this year, if I'm not mistaken. His production wasn't up to par for what uh, Philly was looking for. His cap hit is pretty big. Now, first of all, $5.5 million cap hit, 24 years old, so still pretty young. Uh, fits right into some of the Leafs' core there. He's got this deal until the 2024 25 season now of course like i said um the signing team he plays for philly i'm sure lots of people know that we're going to head down here to his statistics um from all these seasons here you can tell this guy produces the 1920 season was his best season the guy is consistently scoring 24 goals but this year had 34 points in 50 games played now here's the thing the toronto maple leafs are more than likely going to be losing Kerfoot to Seattle or uh, they could be losing him in a trade just to clear up cap space and then that might open up for Seattle to take one of Justin Hall or Travis Dermott I don't know what's going to happen there but the Leafs are going to be shedding a little bit of salary from the expansion draft the other thing is is they're probably going to look to trade one of Mikheyev or Engvall and I would imagine that's going to be Pierre Engvall and then there's also the 
the tough decision in terms of Zach Hyman, which we can, we've can we already talked about in another video. They can re-sign him. It'll just probably be a little difficult. And you also have to remember the $5 million that the Leafs would owe Freddie Anderson. They can go out and get a cheaper goaltender in the 2 to $3 million range as they're probably going to be having a cheap backup as Jack Campbell is going to be the starter for the foreseeable future. So there will be ways for the Leafs to create space and be able to add. You got to remember, Timothy Lilligren, Rasmus Sandin, and Nick Robertson are all going to be regulars on this team next year. They have to be. Timothy Lilligren's going to make that step up. Sandin, 100%. Robertson, 100%. He's going to be a guy that plays on the third and second line, possibly. And they're all going to be cheaper options. And who knows? We might see um, maybe another international free agent signing. Maybe we'll get into the lineup. There's a lot of options. Maybe Adam Brooks is going to be a, f a full-time fourth liner. Jason Spezza probably at league min. Maybe they find a way to get Simmons to take a cheap deal again because he was injured this year. Play him on the fourth line. There's a lot of options and the Leafs will still be really good. And I don't think people are really giving enough credit to a guy like Nick Robertson that could come in and be a 15 to 20 goal guy. He's electric. I'm sure you guys are going to love him once you see him consistently. But the Leafs do have opportunities to make moves here. They'll say they don't, but they do. And especially if they end up trading Mitch Marner, which again, we'll get to in another video. But back to Konechny, this would be a guy that gives you more scoring. He gives you um, a, a really good chance if he plays with good players. Like if he's playing with, with Matthews or, or Marner, Nylander, Tavares, it doesn't matter. These are big name players. He's played with a, a lot of really good players in Philly. This is just an opportunity for him to come to a team that wants to to play hard and prove something and score a bunch of goals in the playoffs, possibly. Um, and he'll bring more scoring. He'll give them more depth. He'll give them more opportunities to score. And that's what the Leafs need, which is hilarious. The Leafs need that. Of all things, the Leafs need to score goals, and they need more of it. They need more talent. So I think Konechny would be a good fit. He scores a lot. Um, the next name would be Christian Dvorak. Uh, play center left wing the cap hit again is pretty high at 4.45 uh, but again very young 25 years old he's got this contract to the 2024-25 season and he's got that modified no trade clause where the player submits a eight team no trade list but uh, a pretty decent sized contract there the numbers aren't as flashy as you would see with um Devo uh, with Konechny but 31 points in 56 games played 18 17 goals you can see he's he's consistently putting up numbers that are in the um, early to late 40 or 30s so this is the thing the acquisition cost would probably be kind of sizable for Dvorak it would be sizable for a Konechny Konechny is the better fit and the better player in my opinion and I'm sure you guys would agree with that and again these are just two names that I wanted to talk about I didn't want to bore you guys to tears by talking about 10 different names and especially since uh, Chris Johnson said that there could be more information coming out and he might be able to talk more about it in a month from now or something like that. We're just going to keep speculating. We're just going to keep talking about it until more information comes out. But both of these guys would make improvements to the Leafs team. And especially if you're going to lose a guy like Zach Hyman, you're going to want to fill it with a guy that's at an equal talent or a higher talent level. So to me, Dvorak seems like it would be the the obvious choice of being more available. But the fact that Konechny wasn't available in terms of being a scratch a couple times for Philly, being available for their team, uh, in a sense, he wasn't putting up the numbers that they expected. This might be an opportunity for him to, to come to Toronto and... and and prove something I don't know again I'm not trying to offend Flyers fans I think that it would be great for him to just stay there and continue playing with another really good hockey team uh well potentially to to be a really good hockey team going forward the Flyers are kind of iffy they're really good and then they're not good they get goaltending then they don't get goaltending they get scoring and then they don't get scoring they're all over the place I'm sure Philly fans know what I'm talking about but they're a good team they have a lot of talent but there's been rumors about Giroux getting traded. I don't know. There, th th listen, guys, we all know how, how hockey media is and how it is, you know, on YouTube and stuff. I'm a part of it. Let's be real. But there is a lot to like about these two players. But what's the cost? The Leafs don't have a ton of draft picks. 
Um, are they going to be trading young players? Are they giving up on their future to get players for right now? Chris Johnston seems to think that the Leafs are going to be at, going after a bigger name. They want a guy for their top six. Either one of these guys, I think Dvorak is more is closer to a third line player. Konechny easily slides into those top two lines and makes them better. So let me know what you guys think. Again, it's just speculation. It's just talk. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys will agree with me in, in terms of the fact that this is just early speculation. It's just early talk. And there's a lot to like about, like I said, there's a lot to like about these players. But um, in terms of a trade, it would be kind of difficult. I think the Leafs are still going to try to hold on to Zach Hyman. Again, there's a few guys that I talked about there that they're going to try to hold on to at cheaper contracts. But let's see what happens going forward. And I also wanted to mention to you guys, recommend some video ideas. Tell me what you guys want to see. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas. I talk about hockey all the time at work with family. It doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm really trying to um, come up with some ideas, talk as much as I can about hockey because I'm just kind of keeping it in. I want to put it out there. That's kind of what I do. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. Lots of videos coming. Uh, recommend trade videos you want me to talk about. Uh, just anything. I could rebuild the Leafs if you want to see that. But yeah, I appreciate you guys. Peace.